In this video, I'll show you how to use the MATLAB editor to make it easier to input, edit and save your work. Remember first to navigate to the place where you want to save your work. I'm going to use the MATLAB folder. Next we click on the button marked New Script in the ribbon bar. This opens a new blank document in the MATLAB editor. You can enter MATLAB commands here in just the same way that you would in the command window. So I'll start by creating a vector of values from minus pi to pi. I'll use steps of 2 pi over 99. This will give a vector of 100 values, including the endpoints. And you can verify this by typing length x. Notice a key difference between the command window and the editor. When I press enter, the results are not evaluated, which allows me to keep entering statements. Later, I will run the whole script, which will be evaluated line by line in the workspace. Results will be printed in the command window. I'm going to make a plot of sine x based on these x values, and we can do this by typing plot x sine x. The standard way to use the plot command is to provide the list of x coordinates as the first input and the list of y coordinates as the second input. I can run the whole script now by clicking run. Before being allowed to run the script, I'm first prompted to save my work. You need to use the file extension .m, which signifies to MATLAB that this is a script file. I'll save my work as demo.m here. As you can see, the plot has been generated. If we have a look in the workspace, we also have the result for x, and looking in the command window, the result for length x has been printed. It isn't good style for script files to print out unnamed variables in the command window, so I'll go back to my script file and I'll change this line to say disp length x. The command disp is short for display. It prints the result on screen without creating a variable. We can add another line before this one saying disp length of array to make it absolutely clear about what's being printed. Notice that I used apostrophes here to indicate that this is a string. Also, the disp command is not affected by the semicolon, so it doesn't matter if I include it here or not. One more change I'm going to make before I run this again is I'm going to clear all of the variables at the beginning. This means that I'll only get the results that I want and nothing in the workspace is going to interfere with the calculations. Let's go ahead and run it. Every time that you click run, the script is automatically saved. You can also use the shortcut key F5 on the keypad to do the same thing. This time, when I ran the file, we had the result length of array 100 printed, and the command length x didn't generate a variable called ants in the workspace. There are better ways of displaying results on screen, but we won't learn about them here because they're not suitable for an introductory lesson. The MATLAB editor is very good at helping us to spot errors before we even run the script. For example, suppose that I forget to use apostrophes to indicate that this is a string. we get a check mark appearing at the right hand side of the editor window and if we mouse over the check mark it tells us that there is an error in line 3. Invalid syntax means that the statement cannot be interpreted. Some of the error messages are more descriptive than others. Putting the apostrophes back fixes the problem and the check mark disappears. The percentage symbol on the computer keyboard can be used to add comments to your scripts. This is extremely useful to keep track of your work. For instance, I could say here that this is an array of 100 equally spaced values 
in the domain from minus pi to pi. The line here indicates the edge of the page and you should try to avoid going much over that if you can. Commands which are separated by a semicolon can be placed on the same line if you want to, but avoid cluttering up your work too much. Keep it all nice and spaced if you can. I'm going to edit this expression so that the curve is now shown in red instead of in blue. I'll use hold on, which means that we're going to keep plotting on the same axes, which allows me to add a second plot using the same x values, and this time we'll have cos of x. I'll change the plot style to be blue, and I'll use a different style for the line. The line will be dashed and the coordinates will be marked with x's. Whenever you use hold on, you should accompany this later with a hold off to stop plotting on the same axes. And finally, I'll clear x again from the variable workspace. You don't have to comment everything, but adding comments is good practice and it makes it easier to come back to your work at a later date. Let's run everything again and have a look in the command window. Notice that because I cleared X at the end, nothing is produced in the workspace. Having a look at the plot, we now have two curves shown on the same axes. We have sine x, which is shown in red, and cos x, which is shown in blue. The plot doesn't look great at the moment because we have some white space here for which there's no curve. It is possible to get rid of this white space by changing the x limits. We can also change the y limits. We have a lot of control over what the plot looks like, but we'll look at how to do this at a later date. Now let's suppose that you want to create a script file as part of an assignment. The assignment might have several questions that you want to include in one script file. This can be conveniently done by using a double percentage in the script file to indicate a section. So we've now created a section. I'll give it a name, question one. I'll create a, a second section below, question two. And let's put some other stuff here. For example, y equals magic 4, and display the result. Once I've created sections, I can run them individually by clicking Run Section here in the ribbon bar. So at the moment I've highlighted the Question 2 section, so if I click Run Section, then I'll just get the results from that part evaluated. Let me first clear everything to give a better demonstration. Okay, let's go again. Section two, run this section. We just get the results from that part. You need to be aware that clicking run section does not save your work. You can save your work at any time by using Control and S or by clicking Save here. And if you try to exit without saving, then you will be prompted to save your changes. The asterisk that appears here indicates that there are unsaved changes. 
All of the assignments that you will be given require you to produce script files, and so you should try to get familiar with the editor now. Practice using the editor to help find and fix errors, and practice using comments and sections in your work. Don't forget though that the command window is still a good place to try out expressions.